Tonight on Out and About. I think it's important as people come to visit this part of the state to get on the water somehow. We like to create things that we know we'd like to do. You know, everyone's always happy coming into the shop, always. And if they're not happy, or if they're happy, they're ha leaving happier. We're doing more modern Mexican style sushi. Go out and about. You know, there are a number of things that the, that the Beaufort Hotel offers uh, to everybody that comes here. We're in a unique spot. Uh, there's, there's probably no other spot on the eastern part of the United States that's on fresh water, immediately adjacent to public waterways, uh, national parks immediately adjacent to us. Uh, there are a number of things that just separate the, the uniqueness uh, apart from anywhere on the East Coast. When you come through the front door, you look right out to Taylor Creek. It, it doesn't, the same thing is true when you're sitting in the dining room. Uh, the view and what it means and the, the comfort that that gives you psychologically is unique. When people walk in, it's a wow to them. You know, their expectation of what they normally see at a beach property is, isn't at the level of what this hotel is. It's meant to feel more like, like a lodge. You know, it has that feel to it of um, where you're going to feel comfortable in an elevated type of experience. You know, people that are coming to the beach, you're not dressing up, you're not wearing a sports coat when you come here. Um, and that feeling is portrayed in how the design of the property was built as well. When you come into a guest room at the Beaufort Hotel, um, just like when you walk into the lobby, it's going to be a different experience. It is, it is a wow. There aren't many hotel rooms that have a chandelier in every bathroom. I always tell people that we're the starting point for your Southern Outer Banks adventure. Through Island Ferry and some of our other partners, you can go to Shackleford Banks, you can have a great trip on the water getting there, which is an experience in itself, um, and then when you're there, you're probably going to see wild horses. I think it's important as people come to visit this part of the state to get on the water somehow. Um, you know, you can rent a paddleboard and take a paddleboard out um, or a kayak and then just sort of go at your own pace. The ability to sit inside in a very nice, spacious, you're not too crowded, upscale restaurant or right on the water you know, with the uh, veranda that we have out front. Um, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which nobody else does, you know, in the local market. But that dining experience itself, no matter what meal period you're coming to, you're never gonna be rushed. All of the food that we make here is from scratch. We don't buy frozen products and reserve them. And, and that's a rarity for a restaurant of this size. We've had the opportunity to go to Kentucky and blend our own bourbon barrels. We did one with Maker's Mark and we've done one with Woodford Reserve. You know, we're proud of the fact that we have more bourbons than anybody else, obviously in Carteret County, but still a ways up and down the East Coast. We highlight bourbons more than we do anything else. And that's a very, very hot liquor right now in this country. There's one ingredient I think that is that is critical, especially in the food and beverage, okay? And that is that you have fun. So what we're trying to deliver here is an attractive uh, environment, good food, fair price, and fun. And we find that when people leave here, they leave with a smile on their face. That's what it's all about. We'd love to have you come and visit the Beaufort Hotel. When you're booking your next vacation, Think of us, think of the coast. Uh, we're about two and a half hour drive from Raleigh. You can find all the information you need, BeauftHotelNC.com. You can book directly through that. It tells all the events that take place in, in the hotel every week, as well as what goes on in the local community throughout the entire year.
Chocolate Smiles is fantastic chocolates that people keep coming back for all the time. It's like family. I am the fourth owner. I've had it for going on 17 years. A friend of mine, her sister had owned a shop and was getting ready to retire. I said, oh, what better place? People are gonna be happy coming in here. You know, that's how I got into it. You know, everyone's always happy coming into the shop, always. And if they're not happy, or if they're happy, they're ha leaving happier because of the chocolates. We see people coming back year after year after year, wanting chocolates for their loved ones. Um, they've been, some of them have been, you know, saying, I'm going to be using the same box that I've been using for so many years. So we provide the chocolates for them, for their boxes. It, it's just heartwarming to see people do that. This will be my, I think, 17th Valentine's. I've seen people for 17 Valentine's. There's people who've been coming longer than that to the shop. We have folks that come in that are adults with their children, and they say, when I was growing up, my mom and dad used to bring me to the chocolate shop, and now I'm bringing my children to the chocolate shop. We hand make 15 plus different types of truffles, different flavors. The plus are special ones that we make just for the holiday. So we have five this year that we're gonna be making in addition to the 15 that we normally make. We also make edible chocolate boxes that we fill, we pre-fill with truffles or with an assortment of chocolates or a customer can also uh, pick and choose what goes in them. And then we'll wrap them up and put a pretty bow on them. One of the other bigger sellers that people want are chocolate covered strawberries. We always require orders for those. We dip them in milk dark and white chocolates. We make you know, all of the different nut clusters. Our sea salt caramels are very popular. We also make our chocolate hearts that we write on with I love you or happy Valentine's Day. We can also personalize those with a name. We make Rice Krispie Pops that we decorate in either milk dark or white chocolate with hearts and you know pretty designs on them. People love the Rice Krispie treats. We make them in milk dark and white chocolate so that people can have their choice. And then if we run out, we make more because we have the kettles right in the back in the kitchen area. Sometimes people say, oh, I want five or six of them. And if we don't have enough, we can make some more for them um, if there's time permitting. And then this year, we're gonna have a limited supply of our bee hot cocoa bombs. Those are one of our uh, great sellers that people want. We're making some regular, some with a raspberry hot chocolate and then our little uh, honeybee over here. And we make them here, uh, so they're out of great chocolate, and we use a great hot cocoa mix inside too. We always try and provide a nice selection of boxes if our customers would like to choose those. They're very pretty. There's ones that you don't find other places. And then we fill them with the chocolates and wrap them in cellophane and put a real pretty bow on them so they're a beautiful presentation. Come by Chocolate Smiles. If you haven't been here before, you're in for a treat. We're also found on the web at chocolatesmiles.com. So the burrito carajillo is uh, steak, which we call carne asada. We, uh, you know, we, we grill the carne asada, rice and beans inside. Carajillos, it's a Mexican restaurant. We have a big restaurant. We can fit about 400 people in here. We have a big bar, 30 people at the bar. So it's, it's, it's something new for us. We're adding Mexican seafood from the Pacific, from Nayarit and Sinaloa. We're adding new Mexican dishes, more modern Mexican dishes. We have a big, humongous kitchen back there. So we have a section for our, our, our Mexican seafood, we have a section for our Mexican food, and then we have a section for our, our sushi. We're doing more modern Mexican style sushi. We're, we're putting our spiciness to it. We're putting flavors, Mexican flavors to our sushi. Our cocktail menu, it's big, it's humongous. Fresh drinks like 
our house margarita is fresh lime juice, fresh orange juice, a little bit of um, agave nectar just to make it a little bit sweeter. We have a little bit of everything as far as drinks. So, you know, you can get from a mango mint margarita to a Mexican old fashioned. We squeeze our, our limes and our oranges daily, you know, so when, when customers ask for a house margarita, we want to stay with uh, fresh, you know, because, because basically that's what, what a margarita is in Mexico. It's just lime juice, lime juice and tequila. We've been doing Mexican food for 30 years. We've been working with seafood for about five years. Some of, our, of the most famous dishes that we have on, on seafood, it's a red snapper, it's a grilled red snapper. It's called sarandeado. It's not really, really spicy, but it's got a little kick to it. Pulpo sarandeado. But we cook the octopus, we put it on the grill, and we put our, our sauce, the sarandeado sauce on it. We have a couple of, of new burritos that are modern. They're a little bit more Mexican. It's called burrito carajillo. So the burrito carajillo is uh, steak, which we call carne asada. We, uh, you know, we, we grill the carne asada, rice and beans inside, and then we roll it up. Our cheese sauce and then salsa verde, pico de gallo, sliced avocado, a grilled jalapeno, grilled onions, you know, for people that like spiciness and like their, you know, more flavor on their food. And then we have another one is burrito de barbacoa. Our barbacoa, it's a, it's a slow, slow cooked beef. We shred it and it's, it's, it's really uh, tender. You know, we, we put a little bit of consomme on the grill and it, it, it makes the tortilla crispy and it's, 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 really, it's really good. Del pico, picocito, it's a modern roll. Then put a shrimp inside, we roll it, we cover it on uh, hot Cheetos. On top of that, we add lightly breaded uh, chicken. And then on top of that, we put our, our hot sauce, which is a salsa matcha. It's got all these peppers and it, so it's, 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 it's really delicious. It's spicy, but it's really, really delicious. On the Mexican surf and turf, it's, it's basically a 12 ounce ribeye. Lobster tail with butter, garlic, and just a little kick of spiciness. Something for people who can't, who can't eat, you know, spicy. We'll have something for them too. We're building a, a, a beautiful restaurant. You know, we want to make it comfortable for everybody. We want them to enjoy everything. Enjoy the food and, and the service and, and definitely the drinks. Come and try the drinks. We have, we have a full menu of drinks. We have, you know, a little bit of everything. Please come join us at Carajillo's Mexican Kitchen, 4205 Fayetteville Road in Raleigh. Come see us. Lyrical Quartet is um, four close friends who love making music together. The quartet repertoire is very unique as well, which we are finding out the more we play together. There's a traditional repertoire which we came together for. Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, Bartok, and, and contemporary composers as well, you know, composers living today, some very fine composers from North Carolina who we played music by Caroline Shaw or mm -hmm. Andy Wagner or there's various composers alive today here or throughout the country. It turns out that quartet is something that I've always wanted to do. But generally, when you know you start out in a quartet, you usually start young, like in college, and then you stay together as a group and you try and you know make make it or make your way. Mm -hmm. And by the time the opportunity to start Lyricosa came to me, I had actually, in some way, given up hope that I would actually have that opportunity. So I was, it was amazing to me that it should, that I should get the opportunity again.
the things that I love about actually the candlelight concerts for my for our quartet. In a sense, right, the common kernel of music, whether it's classical, whether it's pop, whether it's you know R and B, whether all these different genres of music, it's it's to touch people, it's to move people. It, probably one of the highest, in my mind, and the best compliments I can be paid as a musician is having an audience member come up to me and tell me that they've been moved to tears. It really makes what I do very interesting. And then bringing it to audiences is sort of you know, the part that sort of validates it. We, we play in these smaller spaces like All Saints or Merriman House and the audience is, audience is right up there and, and, and you get that sort of electricity between the performer and the audience and, and the, the music and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's very successful, I think. It's, for me, it's, it's, the experience is quite ecstatic a lot of the time. I get that, or I experience that sense of being in the right place at the right time, doing what I'm meant to be doing in that moment. You know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm very lucky in my profession because I feel like every day I go to work, I'm making music with my friends. The quartet is, is something very special to me and I, I really enjoy that, that time making music with with my with my three friends, yeah, and um, and certainly with candlelight, we have we have ended up spending a lot more time together, and it seems like it's going very well. <laughs> Melanated wine is an urban winery. Urban just means that we don't sit on a vineyard. We are, in every essence, a winery. Uh, we're in the middle of the city, so typically when you hear winery, you think that, oh, maybe on the, um, in the country or you know, out where there's a lot of land, and that isn't the case for us. I love North Carolina. There are other grape varietals that grow very well here. Uh, wine varietals that are curated and have won many competitions for our wine. And so it's shedding light on what North Carolina has to offer um, in, in this wine industry. So I am very specific when I say I do not go out of the state for anything. Why? Everything that I could want as far as wine varietals are grown right here in North Carolina. Say I am interested in a Merlot, I'll you know choose a, uh, a vineyard that's growing a, a really good Merlot and I'll have all of that sent to one location that is crushing and bottling for us right now. And then I go on site and I am tasting. We're doing constant tastes of um, our wine as it's maturing and you know going through the process and um, once we are able to capture that flavor it is done it is ready to be bottled everything gets delivered right to us and then we take care of everything else in our tasting room we have five wine varietals our red blend it's a cabernet franc and a syrah blend medium bodied red this one is a nice chill wine, like if you wanted to just have a relaxing evening, a nice date dinner, a nice date night, that's, that's the red blend. And then we have a white blend. It's also a dry wine, and that one is a Chardonnay, which is a tad bit of Riesling, just enough to kind of soften up uh, the Chardonnay, not to alter the flavor at all. It's a really good dry white wine. Um, so those are our, our two dries. And then we have an off-dry semi-sweet Riesling, we get people that um, say that they're not necessarily Riesling people, or you, you either get people who aren't Riesling people or they are. And with ours, we capture both people. Like with our Riesling, it's an off dry semi-sweet. So if you're used to a really sweet Riesling, you'll get that, but it's not necessarily a super sweet Riesling. And then you have people who don't. 
that is, um, it's really good. And then we have two sweet wines. We have a blackberry, which is our newest uh, varietal to the collection. And then we have a white sangria. The white sangria is our fun wine. It has uh, tons of uh, mango and tropical fruit. People really enjoy that one. It's, it's really for the sweet wine lovers, the most popular um, wine that we've had since we've come out with it. We do a lot of events at Melanated Wine. We like to create things that we know we'd like to do. So we do what we call sip and paint. Then we do poetry nights. It allows a platform to uh, poets and it's open mic. We encourage everyone to come and you know share a spoken word. We do a live music, have amazing bands. It's off the beaten path. People enjoy the fact that they don't have to fight for parking. You literally could just park, find a park and walk in. The intimate experience that we have here, and I, I tell people all the time, we're not just selling wine, we're selling an experience. So when you walk through that door, you have an amazing experience and we just happen to have really good wine, but it is really all about the experience when you come to Melanated Wine. You can find Melanated Wine at 4608 Industry Lane in Durham. You can go to our website, melanatedwine.com. Sign up for a tasting. Come out to Melanated Wine.